We're talking about what's ahead in smartphones in 2013, and I'm joined by Mike Geekus, Consumer Reports smartphone expert. Mike, in 2012, we had the five-inch smartphone, we had the 5.5-inch smartphone. Now we have something even bigger, right? Try 6.1 inches. Huawei's Ascend Mate has a 6.1-inch screen, the largest we've seen on any smartphone. Now, isn't that too big? I mean, what are these companies doing to try to make this a little more hand and pocket friendly? Uh, several things. One is they're stretching the screen out closer to the edges so they don't have to make the phone very big. They're putting a curve back to make it comfortable in your hands. And they're allowing you to shrink the keypad so that you can move it closer to your fingers. So we're going to see, I think, some more uh, five inch and five inch plus screens, but we're still going to see smaller phones as well. It's not like everything's going to get big, right? Right, but the new small is going to be about four inches and up. We know people are concerned about protecting their phone, and I think we're seeing some more phones that have toughness to meet that uh, concern, right? That's right. You're going to see more phones with Gorilla Glass protected displays and tougher bodies, enabling them to withstand uh, dust, even water, for a certain period of time. And I think you put one of the phones at CES 2013 to a sort of torture test That's right. to see whether it would still work after you dunked it. Sony's Xperia ZL. I dunked it into a fishbowl and pull it out, pulled it out. But one of the most interesting things about it is not only it kept working, but I could actually use the screen while the phone was wet. Let's talk about connectivity. We have near-field communications, which is a technology that we thought would be used pretty much exclusively to buy things. There's still some mobile wallet technology, but you're seeing some other applications for near-field communications, right? That's right. Its new job is acting as an agent for your phone's other wireless communications. For example, activating the phone's Bluetooth connection when it's near a speaker system so to transmit uh, music wirelessly, or when you tap it against the television set, allowing you to use Wi-Fi Direct to send and receive you know, big video files. What about wireless charging? It's been around for a while, but now I think it's getting built into more phones, correct? That's right. You're seeing phones from Nokia and LG with a technology that make the phone either out of the box, ready to charge by putting it down on a mat, or with a simple modification to a battery. And you're going to see more of that in 2013. And we're even seeing some products like this TDK wireless charging box that puts together wireless charging with the streaming of content like music from the device. That's correct, over Bluetooth. Thanks, Mike. Check out the rest of our smartphones coverage from CES 2013, and stay tuned throughout the year as we cover smartphones and test them, of course, in our ratings. I'm Paul Reynolds for Consumer Reports.